ृंदवर्धन <laughs> व्रजभूमि वृंदावन धाम की मथुरा धाम की द्वारकापुरी धाम की पुरुषोत्तम क्षेत्र जगन्नाथपुरी धाम की श्री मायापुर नवदीप धाम की गंगमय यमुनमय की भक्ति देवी तुलसी देवी की समावेत भक्त वृंद की ऑल ग्लोरीज टू असम्बल दिवोटीज ऑल ग्लोरीज टू असम्बल दिवोटीज ऑल ग्लोरीज टू असम्बल दिवोटीज ऑल ग्लोरीज ऑल ग्लोरीज ऑल ग्लोरीज टू श्री गुरु And Sri Gauranga. Om Ajnana Dimiranda Sanyana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshuhu Vilitam Jena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manano Bhishtam Sthapitam Jena Bhutale Swayam Rupakkada Mahyam Dadati Svapadantikam Vandeham श्री गुरो श्रेयुत पद कमल श्री गुरून वैष्णवांश 
श्री रूपम सग्रजातम सह गण रघुनाथान्वित तम सजीव साइत सवधूत पर्जना सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्रीराधा कृष्ण पाद सह गण ललिता श्री विशाखान्विता नमा ओं विष्णुपदा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चातिणे नमो महावदल्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदायते कृष्णा कृष्ण चैतन्य नाने गौरत्षे नम हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधो दीन बंधो जगत्पते पेश गोपिका कांतराधा कांत नमस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय कांचाकुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर ये नष्ट प्रायद्रेशु नि भागवत सेवया भगवत्युतम श्लोक भक्तिर्भवति नैष्टिकी कृष्णा वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय च नंद गोपकुमाराय गोविंदय नम Welcome all of you for the Shrimad Bhagavatam class this morning. We are reciting from the sixth canto, fifth chapter, text number forty. Netham pum sam viragasyat, vaya kevali nam risha, manya se yadupa, manya se yadupashamam, sneha paash. निकृतनमृषा मन्यसे मन्यसेपम स्नेहपाश निकृतन नेरागह सैया कवलिना मृषा मन्यसे यदुपशम स्नेहपाश निकृतन नेवलिनाशा मन से 
स्नेहपाशन क्रंथन नेत्थम सांराग सया कवलिनामृषा मनते सुपुशम स्नेहपाशन क्रंथ मत जी नेत्थम सांराग सया कवलिनामृषा मनसे यदुपशम स्नेहपाशन कृतन नाथम इन दिस् वे पुंसाम ऑफ पर्सन विराग प्रनौंसिएशन सैसिबल तया बयु कवलिनामृषा पोसेसिंग नॉलेज फॉल्सली मन्य से यू थिंक यदि इफ तो पशम प्रनौंसिएशन ऑफ मेटीरियल एंजॉयमेंट स्नेहपाश द बॉन्ड्स ऑफ अफेक्शन निकृंतन कटिंग ट्रांसलेशन पर पुट बाइज डिवाइन ग्रेस ऐसी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी श्री प्रभुपाल की प्रजापति दक्षा कंटिन्यूड इफ यू थिंक that simply awakening the sense of renunciation will detach one from the material world i must say that unless full knowledge is awakened simply changing dresses as you have done cannot possibly bring detachment purport prajapati daksha was correct in stating that changing one's dress cannot detach one from this material world the sanyasis of kaliyuga who change their robes from white to saffron and then think that they can do whatever they like are more abominable than materialistic grahasthas this is not recommended anywhere prajapati daksha was right in pointing out this defect but he did not know that narada muni had aroused the spirit of renunciation in the hari ashwasan chavalaswas through full knowledge such enlightened renunciation is desirable one should enter the renounced order with full knowledge gnana vairagya <clears throat> for the perfection of life is possible for one who renounces this material world in that way this elevated stage can be reached very easily as supported by the statements of shrimad bhagavatam vasudeve bhagavati bhakti yoga prayojita जनयत्याशु वैराग्यम ज्ञानम च यदहैतुक बाय रेंडरिंग डिवोशनल सर्विस एंड टू द पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड श्री कृष्ण वन इमीडिएटली अक्वायर्स कास्टलेस नॉलेज एंड डिटैचमेंट फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड इ वन सीरियसली एंगेजेस इन डिवोशनल सर्विस टू लॉर्ड वासुदेवा ज्ञान एंड वैराग्य आर ऑटोमेटिकली मैनिफेस्ट इन वन पर्सन दर इज नो डाउट ऑफ दिस प्रजापति दक्ष अक्यूसेशन that narada had not actually elevated his sons to the platform of knowledge was not factual all the sons of prajapati daksha had first been raised to the platform of gnana and had then automatically renounced this world in summary unless one's knowledge is awakened renunciation cannot take place for without elevated knowledge one cannot give up attachment for material enjoyment so the dialogue between prajapati daksha and narada muni is going on in this chapter awakening knowledge is like switching on a light in a dark room once you switch on a light you can see things as they are and there is no confusion there is no bewilderment um, and one cannot commit any blunder in the same manner a person who has become awakened to the knowledge that the contact of the senses and sense objects cannot make one happy uh, as it says in the bhagavad gita ehi samsparsha ja bhoga dukhayone evate adyantavanta kaunteya ateshu ramate budha this verse says that the contact of the senses and sense objects is a source of misery 
and those who are intelligent do not take part in them he says now what are the senses in sense objects we have five senses eyes nose ears tongue and skin and we bring these senses in contact with the their respective objects eyes want to see beautiful forms um, ears uh, want to hear sweet sounds nose want to smell fragrant objects um, tongue wants to taste delicious preparations skin wants to touch soft objects so there is a strong tendency urge which is observable by every living entity in these five senses in uh, animals and birds and insects you will see some of them don't have eyes some of them don't have ears some of them don't have legs or hands like worm if you see they don't have hands and legs similarly uh, they say also that a snake does not have ears it only perceives through vibration uh, similarly some creatures cannot see properly like some creatures have eyes but they cannot perceive forms clearly and like dog for example when we go with our sumo outside the gate you will find a dog coming running you will see <laughs> because the dog thinks some big creature is coming huh? it cannot clearly understand how many of you seen the dog standing in the middle of the road you seen that when they go in a vehicle that's why they get attacked also sometimes by the vehicles huh? because they can't clearly see but although many creatures have deficiency in some of their senses by god's grace they have something powerful with each of them like dog can sniff and find out a thief similarly you find the moth has eyes very powerful the eye eyes of the moth are attracted to the fire which is like a sunflower it thinks like a sunflower it enters the fire and gets roasted similarly the uh, fish has a tongue although fish gets abundant food in the ocean uh, he still wants to eat that meaty bait from the top he goes to eat that and hook goes inside his belly and he dies like that you will see uh, the fish dies due to tongue moth dies due to eyes the honey bee i mean not the honey bee the bumble bee it enters the lotus and sucks honey and goes to sleep uh, when the sun sets the lotus closes and poor creature dies inside it cannot come out the same bumblebee which had the ability to poke a hole in a tree later on cannot poke a hole even in the petal of a lotus he becomes so weak this goes to show how one go partakes of the bhog our enjoyment becomes weak minded anybody who does sense gratification becomes weak like that so one who does not engage in lord service so he becomes weak inside the lotus similarly the deer becomes attracted by the music uh, sung uh, sung or played by some instrument by a hunter and it just gets bewildered so much it uh, goes in the direction of the music and hunter will throw a, a rope around his neck and capture him huh? he gets caught similarly the elephant has weakness for the opposite sex and the skin attraction so they catch a male elephant by keeping a female elephant on the other side and making a big pit and they put some bamboo sticks over the pit and they lay down some leaves dry leaves over it jay shri shri radha abhinav chandra ki jagannath bhai subhadra marani ki shri shri kaur nathai ki so when the elephant sees the she elephant from here he becomes attracted and then he makes sound and runs towards the she elephant huh? because he doesn't care about anything else at that time he runs over the dry bamboo sticks the dry bamboo sticks break and they collapse and he falls into the pit and three days they don't give him any grass can you imagine he is a very voracious eater he eats tons of grass but now he can't eat anything he is trapped in the pit and he becomes very weak he thinks i'm going to die but then third day they feed him little grass and they chain him up and they drag him into a lorry and take him into the lorry for zoo in zoo he has to sit with all four legs on one small stool in the forest he can is free to wander everywhere here he is trapped by that female female attraction male female attraction yeah so 
one time uh, i guess jana mata ji was selling maharaj maharaj this brahmacharya's life is so easy huh? and maharaj asked why do you say so she said maharaj these fellows get up in the morning and they're dancing early in the morning huh? and they are happily they get to chant together and they attend the bhagavatam class when they finish bhagavatam class and come with a plate they get hot prasad hmm? she was telling our uh, married life is not so easy hmm? we have so many household responsibilities and duties and chores to be done hmm? and later on maharaj uh, told us when we brahmacharya met him he said see she said brahmacharya life is so joyful yes it is true for you it is joyful hmm? that is because you have uh, given up that male female attraction Uh, you are ready to forego that and instead turn your attraction to the divine couple radha and krishna hmm. so if you are ready to uplift your attraction to the divine couple hmm, then uh, one is uh, one has opportunity for a carefree life practically hmm. everything is arranged by the lord life is very cool hmm. and even in family life also you will see husband wife they are staying together if they can turn their attraction towards the lord and his service rather than becoming attached to one another huh? then they also lead a very happy life huh? which uh, which comes to uh, show one interesting phenomenon that sense grat- the sense gratification on the material platform produces misery any sense gratification whether it is a brahmachari grahastha irrespective of that if our mind is attached to material sense gratification that means we are inviting misery hmm. on the contrary in whatever ashram you are in if you are able to uplift our vision in such a true knowledge huh, through awakening of knowledge if you can uplift your vision to service to the divine couple uh, with a whole hearted consciousness then anybody in this world can live a very happy life huh? even in this world one can just focus one's attention on spiritual life and go back to god head so all the five senses are represented by one one creature i told you but in human body all the five senses are active we have eyes nose tongue ears and skin all are very active somebody may say why krishna is so cruel he created all these senses and putting us in trouble actually he has given us senses all senses alert and awake so that rishikena rishikesha sevanam bhakti ruchi to engage it in lord self that's the purpose for which he has given us senses but by misuse of the senses for sense gratification the senses become putrefied but by the right use of senses in krishna service they become purified so how can we purify the senses first of all we need knowledge and this is the knowledge which i was just telling you yehi samsprasha ja bhoga dukha yone evate if we have the bhoga vritti then we get dukha if you have seva vritti then it is very sukhamaya prati divase parama sukhe he says you know our uh bhakti vinod thakur sings in that song huh? in that shuddha bhagata charana in the last in the last lines he says prati divase parama sukhe he says every day is a jolly day huh? rise in the morning take bath for krishna sake then wear tilak wear dress and come in front of the lord chant and dance for the pleasure of the uh, lord and you know hear his glories chant his names and uh, uh, take prasad and use your bodily limbs for rendering service to him hmm, with hands and legs and with all the different senses engage in lord service dress him decorate him feed him glorify him such a beautiful life it is as so, therefore he says pati divase parama sukhe huh? very very joyful path it is susukam kartum we am it's imperishable path it's a very joyful path huh? it is not a difficult path like the gnanis or the yogis huh? who have to artificially repress their senses huh? here our senses are engaged in lord service huh? it is not like the yogis path that you have to be asked here you have to eat uh, kandamol and berry and roots and everything huh? one can offer things to lord and accept prasad so at the same time the only condition in the path of bhakti is that we should not let the senses go astray uh, chasing after sense gratification and uh, generally when we come to this material world 
the senses have a tendency to go for material sense gratification. That's a default option in the senses when we are in a conditioned stage. So, uh, how do we lead our life? By design or by default? No. Those who design their life, they are spiritualists. A spiritualist knows very well, animal instinct means to go by default, go for sense gratification. Human life means, you know, go by design. Design your day from morning to night, how I want to mold my day today and design my week. I can design my month and can design this whole year. Design means choice. I choose to do the right thing. I reject the wrong thing. Yes to Krishna, no to Maya. That is design. Huh? Design our life like that. So, we can see that in us, there are two propensities. There are animalistic propensity and angel-like propensity. So, we have to feed that angel more and more. And that is why the life of a devotee is molded like this. Huh? And by daily habit, gradually the angel in us will come out. Huh? Angel like Vaishnava will come out of, of us. And animal like propensities can be totally discarded hmm, over a period of time. Hmm. But if somebody goes for bhoga, yehi samsparshaja bhoga, then one brings out that animal in animal instincts, then one suffers, one gives suffering to others also. Hmm. One also suffers, one gives suffering to others also in the name of pleasure. Hmm. The material pleasure is another synonym for misery. Material enjoyment means misery. Uh, our Prachetas are saying that in one verse. Rupam bhagavata tu yetat ashesha klesha sankshayam avishkritam na kleshtaya yamanyat anukampitam. My dear Lord, you are so kind. You come, come in the form of this deity to receive our services. And we living entities are so foolish that we chase after misery in the name of sense gratification. Huh? They are saying, we chase after what? Yeah, we chase after misery and what is it? Why are <laughs> Somebody will laugh at you if you say chase after misery. Who will chase after misery? Is there any of you here? You will run to somebody and say, beat me. Take this stick and beat me up. Will you say that? Huh? None of us want misery, but misery is coated with a cover which is called sense enjoyment. Hmm? I, I heard a story one of the sannyasis was telling. Two sadhus were walking in the bank of a river. Ganga sometimes has a very great pravaha. You seen that uh, in uh, in Haridwar, Rishikesh, and all. Uh, Ganga flows very fast. So they were walking. And what is a sadhu? Sadhu means he's a fakir. His life should be very simple. Uh, generally, sadhus have a stick, one stick for driving away the monkeys and dogs. And you have a stainless steel box for keeping everything, whether it is roti, sabji, or uh, later on night you keep milk. Morning, you keep water and things like that. Uh, uh, multi activities in one. Uh, so, just one stainless steel box, one stick, and one uh, upper garment for putting as a turban or for sitting or lying in the night, multi purpose also. Uh, they don't have much assets, I mean, much uh, assets. So, when they were going, walking by the side of the river, chanting and singing Harinam very peacefully, uh, one of the two sadhus looked at the river and he saw. A uh, blanket was, big dark, black color blanket was moving in the river. And immediately told this other sadhu, keep my stick in this stainless steel box, I am coming immediately. So I asked, where, where are you going? He said, let me take this blanket and dry it in the sunlight and fold it and keep it. Whenever winter season comes, it will be helpful. Hmm? And that other sadhu said, when winter comes, we will see. Huh? Somebody will give. This fellow was uh, having a habit of accumulation. Hmm? Accumulate, accumulate, accumulate. So he left it and he jumped into the river and he swam and went to there. And this other sadhu was waiting. This fellow didn't come back. After five minutes, six minutes, I saw, Hey, why are you not coming? He said, the blanket is not leaving me. He said, Really? Why? How can blanket catch you? He said, it's not a blanket, it's a balu. He said, You know balu? What is balu? Beer, beer, yeah. It looked like a blanket for him from a distance, but it caught hold of him. River. Similarly, everybody looks at the world around. It looks like there is opportunity for enjoyment. But when you go and touch that, immediately you get trapped. You can, can see that. I, I feel very sorry when I see this. Like uh, 
like in one of the park uh, in one of the cities and i told one devotee to take me for chanting to a park in park we went and there one boy is sitting and pacifying a crying girl hmm? uh, 10 o'clock in the morning hmm? he is not going to college both are sitting and she is weeping and he is pacifying her hmm? later on we went back to temple i thought better chant in temple only hmm? and chanted in temple one o'clock we had to go for a program we came by the same road and that fellow still sitting in the park and pacifying i wanted to ask that boy is your father paying you money for pacifying this girl this is called as purchasing responsibility purchasing trouble see if you are married to a woman it is your duty to protect wife and protect children and care for them you know buy a car you know give her sari ornaments it's your duty no no man can marry and say i don't care about my wife then you will be religious to not care for the wife now his father is paying him money for studying in the college unnecessarily he is connecting with somebody and that fellow that person is crying and is pacifying sitting in the park 3 3 hours just see so this is example of how the living entity gets into trouble in this world so see when you look at the world around we can learn so many lessons in this world so don't purchase trouble in the material already we have come to a wrong place which is called material world we have left the lords association and come here and we should not complicate our life even more already you have complicated purpose is danger must be there because you put yourself in dangerous position already then why to increase the troubles so increasing trouble or purchasing trouble means unnecessarily trying to use the senses or contacting sense objects for enjoyment that doesn't mean senses should never be brought under contact of sense objects no that is also a wrong understanding like the buddhists say or impersonal they say according to vaishnava philosophy senses and sense objects can be brought in contact with each other in a regulated way for in married life for example a man and woman are allowed to come together in vivaha yagna we call it vivaha yagna means it is actually a sacred activity because it is done with the blessings of the parents blessings of people in society blessings of demigods blessings of supreme lord they come together and they do agnivalam so agnivalam means they go around the uh, vishnu's um, mouth which is sacrificial fire and they take a promise that we will uh, stay together on a sacred tie we will we will not separate by divorce but we will stay together uh, for the purpose of serving the supreme lord uh, for the purpose of serving hari guru and vaishnavas and, uh, and that's called pani grahanam pani means hand grahanam means to catch so the father does kanya dan huh? is giving his daughter in marriage to a boy and the boy is catching the hand of the girl that's called pani grahanam responsibility is shifted from the father's father taking responsibility for daughter to the husband taking responsibility for the wife huh? a kind of it's a very uh, uh, properly authorized method of uh, uh, man woman coming together so man it's not that man woman cannot come together in a marriage sacred tie it is permitted and that that is also as glorious as a brahmachari dedicating his life for um, serving the mission of guru because husband wife also they can also serve the guru in that ashrama hmm? so there is brahmachari ashram there is also grihastha ashram hmm? and there are glorious grihasthas there are glorious brahmacharis glorious sanyasis also but everybody should stick to the path laid by the vedas for them then we can see brahmacharis are told never contact a woman for sense gratification uh, it is prohibited for them whereas a man who wishes to enter grihastha ashram is allowed to catch the hand of a woman and do agni wala take responsibility brahmacharis is told never accumulate money for grihastha is told you should accumulate money for running the family hmm? and for giving charity to vaishnavas is it brahmachari is told never you know um, accumulate a house or goods or other commodities hmm? don't have a habit of storing but grihastha is told you have to build a house you have to get grains you have to get vahanas vehicle you have to get furniture you have to put up a family hmm? you have your duty and you can also make a altar at home and also worship the lord eh? you need to have a private house brahmacharis have no privacy for brahmachari but just as have a private home with their allowed yeah and and you will see 
Brahmachari means no sex life. Huh? Whereas Duhasas are allowed to enter in that sacred tie and produce children and raise them in Krishna consciousness. Huh? They have their uh, prescribed duties. It's called regulated sense gratification. Hmm? So, what is the advantage of regulated sense gratification? Bhagavatam says, if a man and woman come together, get married, and they are doing regulated sense gratification, as ordained by the Guru, with the desire to develop detachment and attain kingdom of God, then therefore, and faithfully to follow the instruction of Guru, one miracle happens in their life. What is that miracle? Uh, when they initially married, they had attraction to each other, man and woman. But because they followed the regulated program, faithfully following the order of Guru, and with the desire to develop detachment, as they go from 25 to 50, they will clearly see that detachment has developed. No more attraction to one another. Or husband and wife will be greatly attracted to each other as spiritual partners. And they see one another as spiritual friends serving together, and then they will very easily go back to Godhead, like Prithu and Archi. We see that. Similarly, Brahmachari, for example, is joining at the age of 24-25. He, Prabhupada says in one purport, uh, Grihasthas are attached, Sannyasis are detached, Brahmacharis are attached and detached. He writes like that. Huh? That means they have some amount of attachment also. And there is attra attraction attachment for the opposite sex in the early stage. Huh? And they also have some amount of detachment. Huh? because of which they make an effort to join the ashrama and lead a clean, pure life. So, how do they surpass this attachment? Because in Grihastha Ashram, there is a regulated sense gratification program given to them, isn't it? In Brahmacharya life, there is no regulated program for connecting with opposite sex. There is no such connection. One is told to completely give out. Therefore, Krishna says, Karmendriyani samyamya eyaste manasasmaran Indriyarthan vimodhatma mithyachara savuchyate. He is telling that if a person artificially restrains his senses, namely the you know, hands, legs, genitals, rectum, speech, these things away from the opposite sex, plus the Shabdasparsha rasa rupa ganda, ten senses, he is withdrawing in connection with the opposite sex. Externally, he is withdrawing, that's called dhamma. But in the mind, he is contemplating on them, on the opposite sex, which is called, that means he is not doing Shama. He is not able to do Shama. He is able to do Dhamma. Externally controlling them, but internally contemplating still with some kind of attraction or attachment to them. He, he is called as a Mithyachari, he says. So, what, what does the Brahmachari do in the early stage? Attraction may be there. Rasavarjam, Rasopyasya. Paramdrishtva nivartate. So, our Acharya's commentary I was reading recently. What is this Paramdrishtva? They are saying Paramdrishtva is the beauty of the deity. They have clearly mentioned that. If a Brahmachari becomes very attracted to the beauty of the Lord and he falls in love with the Lord and he develops eagerness to please him, serve him, satisfy him by dressing him, by decorating him, by dancing for him, singing for him, by rendering service to him, like book distribution, Harinam. Remembering, this is my Lord, my Prananath. I will lay down my life air for him. My body, my mind, my words, everything is for his pleasure. <coughs> one should have very firm faith in the deities. Because of one's connection to the spiritual master. That kind of faith can be awakened. So, uh, then the, when the higher taste is, higher taste can be developed only when there is a genuine uh, type of attraction. You cannot artificially do devotion service for a very long time. Maybe in the beginning you can do it mechanically for a while. Uh, just like for example, aeroplane, it goes in a runway, correct? No? After some distance of running in the runway, aeroplane takes off. Similarly, we have to run in Satvaguna, run, 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 and then take off to Vishuddha Sattva. Hmm? After that, hmm? you have to, some Paragisha Anubhava should be there. Some amount of spiritual droplets of bliss has to be there for one to, <clears throat> even a few drops, can carry one for years together also, decades together also. If one gets that experience. <clears throat> that experience of higher taste comes by faithfully controlling the senses, by withdrawing them from sense objects, 
Grihasthas are allowed to indulge, engage, not indulge. They are allowed to engage in a regulated way. Hmm? Whereas brahmacharis are not allowed to engage in a regulated way. Rather, they have to withdraw their senses uh, from the opposite sex. Even if by mistake the mind slips, then one has to again correct oneself, wake up and walk ahead. Huh? And, and anyone who faithfully follows the order of the Guru, gradually that attraction for opposite sex, attraction for privacy, attraction for my own thing, my own kingdom, that kind of thing will go away. Huh? Attraction for accumulating things, attraction for lavish lifestyle, extravagant lifestyle, all that will evaporate from a brahmacharya's heart. And by the time he reaches 50, 60, Mm. You can, like uh, Dhruva Maharaj saw, he came with a certain type of desire to the forest. What was his desire? Huh? Big kingdom. Not, actually his desire was greater than Dhritarashtra also. Mm. Dhritarashtra's desire was earthly kingdom. Dhruva wanted a kingdom better than Brahma also. Mm. Big, big uh, greed he had. Mm. With that he came to forest. But then, <coughs> when he faithfully followed Narada, <coughs> Chanting Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, you know, following the regulative principles, doing Ashtanga Yoga. What was the result? That particular greedy desire, greedy ambition got completely nullified. Huh? <coughs> Otherwise, how did he say, Kacham Vichinvana Pidi Viratnam, Swami in Kritarthosmi Varam Neyache? How did he say that? Huh? I don't want a kingdom, Dhruva Loka, I am such a fool. Noonam Vimushtamatayaha, Tabamayayate, Etpam Bhavapaya. Imokshanaman Niketu Archanti Kalpakatarum Kunapopa Bhogyam. See, he's calling the Lord as a Kalpakatarum. Huh? My dear Lord, you are like a desert tree. Yes, it is true. You can give material benedictions. You can give heavenly planets. You can also give moksha, liberation. Anybody asks anything, you are able to provide them. You are capable of providing anything and everything. But I am such a fool. That if somebody goes to a multi multi millionaire and asks for 10 paisa, huh? how foolish it will be. Hmm? You know, I am coming to such a great personality like you and asking for, you know, broken pieces of glass, hmm? like this kingdom of this world. Having seen you, that desire is finished, he says. So, uh, when one uh, faithfully follows the path of Krishna consciousness, one can see uh, what is man, what is woman, everybody's uh, body is. Uh, suffering in this world. You you ask uh, anybody, you will see that whether you are a man or a woman, they have their own, everybody has their complication in the body. Somebody has problem in the liver, somebody has problem in the belly, somebody has problem in the heart problem, somebody has, you know, bone problem, somebody has this disease, somebody has that disease. There are diseases, as the scholars, uh, for Prahlad Maharaj says, <coughs> uh, in one of the verses he says, uh, what is that? Ashesha. I know, what is the beginning of the verse? Kutra shishat shuti sukha mrigatrishni rupa vedam kale varam ashesha rujam viroha. He says, this body is a body of diseases, vyadi mandiram. How can one be, you can't be attracted to even your own body. How can you be attracted to anybody else's body? Everybody's body in this world is undergoing so many difficulties and troubles. And the mind is also giving a lot of troubles. The mind is full of tears and inferiority complexes and challenges and you know all lust anger greed and all these things so we are all struggling with our own body and mind and when two people come together in this world with their body and mind there is a lot of troubles are there but if one puts krishna in the center all these troubles can be washed away because krishna consciousness is purifying and elevating so one will not feel the attraction over a period of, uh, as we, one progresses in Krishna consciousness, because one will see that every jiva is seated in a bodily machine, yantra, rudani, maya, and wandering here and there with the sense gratification program. And they are trying for it and they are suffering for it. And intelligent living beings take off from that sense gratification program and they focus their attention on the Lord. Huh? Let me be that kind of living being. So one can understand. So, in this way, that Yehi Sansparsha Jabhoga verse is that Dukha Yone Evate Nathe Yushuramate Buddha, he says. Huh? Intelligent people don't take part in materialistic activities of eat, sleep, drink and be merry. Hmm? They don't like this lifestyle because it cannot make one happy, the true sense. Hmm? It is simply cheating life. All the glitter and glamour of the material world uh, is uh, simply uh, here to plunge the living being in an ocean of suffering. Hmm? They cannot make us happy. 
true happiness is in the lotus feet of Krishna. So, Nathyeshwara Mathe Buddha. Similarly, another verse says, Bhogaishwarya Prasaktanam Daya Apakrita Chetasam Vivasayatmika Buddhir Samadhau Navidhiyate. He says that if you want Samadhi in Krishna's lotus feet, there are two great enemies for you. Krishna says, What are they? Bhoga and Aishwarya. Bhoga is uh, attraction for the opposite sex. And Aishwarya is uh, opulences. Big bungalow, big car, big fat job, paying fat salary. Fat time also you have to give for that. Isn't it? Uh, big job, big bungalow, big car. Sometimes you see some banks, they have made everything out of glass. Have you seen that? Huh? Isn't it? So, you know, lighting and that, that is actually Aishwarya. Huh? Opulence. Show off. Huh? Big show off. Yeah. <clears throat> One time they had called me to this uh, lay meridian. They had a, uh, I think, uh, Lions Club presidents were meeting. Something like 300 presidents of Lions Club. They were coming together. Hmm? So they wanted one program, some 45 minutes to one hour, they wanted some leadership uh, program. So, Shraddhi Prabhu took me, so we both went. So, but then the program, something else was going, they told us to wait for 15 minutes. So I, I was sitting outside, in the sofa we were sitting, and you saw chuk 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 light, huh? chandeliers and, you know, boys, girls were coming with all flashy dresses and it's very artificial life huh, in this world. Huh? People, I show off myself to you, you show off yourself to me. It's a life of show off actually. Many people uh, eat, drink and be merry lifestyle, huh? which most people adopt. This is simply a facade. It looks very attractive. Suddenly it will come to your heart. And the jiva doesn't know where he's going after that. It is here today, gone tomorrow. So that is why those people who are in the spiritual path should always be able to see something long term and not be stuck in the immediate pleasures. One should know that it is here today, it will not be there tomorrow. No. One should, that, like the clouds are having one formation now, after some time it will be a different formation. The material world is always in a state of flux and constantly changing. So, uh, as it's said in this verse, two things, knowledge and renunciation. If knowledge is awakened, that material objects are temporary, and uh, I am soul, I am eternal. My relationship is not with this world. My relationship is with spiritual world, Krishna. And, uh, uh, and sense gratification cannot make me happy. It is uh, pain producing. So, with all this knowledge, when it is heard repeatedly from the scriptures, and uh, then one becomes faithful. See, one thing is about knowledge. Another thing is faithful execution of the knowledge. That's very important. Prabhupada says there are some people in the spiritual path who hear and they get awakened. There are some people who hear and they see with their eyes and they get awakened. There are some people who hear and they see and still they want to experience. Then once they experience, they realize enough is enough now. Now I am personally realized now. I will not go for this. And then there are people who have heard, they have seen, they have experienced, then they say, okay, this time it didn't work out, I will try in another way. Hmm? They try also. That means renunciation awakens for different people in different levels, different amounts of time also. Yosvakat parata parato veka jata nirveda atmavan hridim kritva harim gehat prabrajet sa narottama. That person is called as narottam or topmost human being, for whom yo swakat, by his own contemplation and observation of the world around, he has come to the right conclusion, uh, detachment has awakened in his heart. He understood, no, this world cannot make me happy, only Krishna can make me happy. Hmm? Simply by one's own contemplation, yo swakat. And then parato va iha, he is saying, or sometimes by strong preaching of somebody. Hmm? Somebody, you heard a lecture and like one line I read in Prabhupada's purport, in this world, nobody can do any good to anybody because everybody has to drive their own plane. Papa said, my Lord, that hit me so hard. I have to drive my plane. He has to drive his plane. He has to drive his plane. Everybody has to drive. Immediately I could picture as I am driving my fighter aircraft. 
I am driving alone. Everybody is driving. They are on plane. If there is a group of birds flying in the sky, somebody shoots one bird. What do you think other birds will do? They will continue going. They will continue flying. Actually, although we all stay together in this world as families, this, that and all that, every one of us is ultimately individual. Our relationship is not with anybody except Krishna. Of course, our relationship is with everybody through Krishna. As brothers and sisters, we are connected. But other than without Krishna contact, our relationship with each other is absolutely nothing to do with each other. So everyone has to drive his own plane. So in this way, when we read uh, the knowledge uh, from the commentary of the great souls, uh, that knowledge itself is very awakening. We may get realization by hearing that knowledge. And then you see the world with Shastra Chakshu. Uh, with whatever knowledge you heard, with that knowledge, you have to see the world. Yes, it is true. What Bhagavatam says, Bhagavad says is 100% true. I can see with my eyes. And your convictions become even more stronger. But some people, uh, even after hearing and seeing, they are not able to develop that uh, detachment. They still feel that there must be some happiness. You know? Let me try it myself. They don't uh, get convinced. So they go for trying it themselves. Then when they try, then eventually they realize. Like for example, you ask any boy, girl in a college days, they have a very romantic, very rosy picture of life. Huh? Very innocent. They don't know. Huh? Huh? And even before the marriage, one has a very, very rosy picture of life. Huh? Then when they marry, they become more responsible actually. Because when, when a man and woman comes to close together, although initially it is very attractive, eventually they see that we both are not similar. Huh? She has many expectations. He has many expectations from each other. And the expectations they are not unable to fulfill. Nowadays, it has become all the more difficult because everybody is watching all Hollywood, Bollywood actors, actresses. Imagine if man expects his wife to be like a Hollywood, Bollywood actress and she expects him like a James Bond. Eh? You know, that expectation, a foolish expectation. Eh? No, our bodies are not like that. Eh? So, they come with false expectations. Similarly, everybody wants a lot of money. Everybody wants very grand facilities because we are globally connected now. The greed has become increased and vitiated now. Eh? So, more the expectation, more painful the life becomes from each other. On the contrary, Vedic life teaches you should accept your partner as a gift of God. See, if somebody gives you a gift, you don't criticize the gift. Because if a man and woman are connected by karma, one should accept it as it's God's plan. Even if you have trouble from each other also, one should live out the life, understanding that God has put me in this test. I should purify me in this way. So, the Vedic perspective is totally different from modern day perspective. Hmm? So in this way, when uh, when man and woman come together and they beget children, initially the child is very beautiful looking, cute looking, kua, kua, kua. it looks very nice. Hmm? It's all pinkish hands, pinkish legs, very sweet looking. But when the child becomes 15, 20, parents wonder, my lord, it's very difficult to manage this fellow. Hmm? Isn't it? So it's a package of happiness and suffering. Sukha and Dukha, both. Marriage also. While entering marriage, you get happiness. After three, four years, you get suffering also. Correct, no? Similarly, mm -hmm. Brahmacharya Ashram also. You want to enter in Brahmacharya Ashram. Initially, all boys jump and dance, hurry bowl, hurry bowl, very happy. Huh? But after coming into Ashram, they feel like every morning I have to give attendance. Huh? Now you have to go. And I have to do this seva, that seva. You know, there is no time to relax. Huh? If anybody is found to be sleeping, manager will come, hey, get up. Come, go for the service. Then they think it's not as happy as I thought of it to be. That means whether in any ashram you go, if you come with the propensity for sense gratification, you will suffer, you will see. Material world is a combination of sukha dukkha. But if you understand, I am not the body, I am spirit soul, servant of Krishna, then you become super enthusiastic. You are enthusiastic, you are determined, you are confident, you are patient, you are clean, you, you are never lethargic, you are very hardworking, you are, uh, you are always willing to be an obedient servant of the Guru and you strictly adhere to whatever Guru has prescribed for you as the path. Do this, you do it. Don't do it, don't do it. And you understand, this body is a passing away phenomenon. Let me use this body, mind, words, absolutely in the fire of Sankirtan Yajna. Engage it in Lord's service. Go back to Godhead. So, with a spiritual outlook, our life would never be miserable. It is Susukam Karato. It's very joyful. Um, 
ಏಂ ಪ್ರಸನ್ನ ಮನಸೋ ಭಗವದ್ಭಕ್ತಿ ಯೋಗತ ಭಗವತ್ತತ್ವ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಮುಕ್ತ ಸಂಘಸ್ಥ ಜಾಯತೆ ವಿದ್ಯತೆ ಹೃದಯ ಗ್ರಂಥಿಸ್ಛಿದ್ಯಂತೆ ಸರ್ವಸಂಶಯ ಏಯಂತೆ ಚಾಸ್ಯ ಕರ್ಮಿ ದೃಷ್ಟೇ ವಾತ್ಮನೀಶ್ವರೆ ಸೇಯಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಒನ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ವೆರಿ ಚಿಯರ್ಫುಲ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಪರ್ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಸೊ ಏದರ್ ಯು ಹರ್ಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಬಿಕೇಮ್ ಅವೇಕನ್ ಯು ಡೆವಲಪ್ ಡಿಟ್ಯಾಚ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ನಾಲೆಡ್ಜ್ ಆನ್ ಒನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಡಿಟ್ಯಾಚ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಅದರ್ ಆರ್ ಯು ಹರ್ಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಬ್ಸರ್ವ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ಯು ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಯು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಅವೇಕನ್ ಆರ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ವಾಂಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ ದೆನ್ ಯು ಎಂಟರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಲೈಫ್ ಇನ್ ಯು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವೈ any man and woman they have come together and they begot and children and raised they are very experienced people huh? those who are newly getting married now they should go and take shelter of those grahasthas who are uh, grown up and they have begot and children and raised them to teenage they are they have practical experience no brahmachari can give guidance like that huh? sometimes grahasthas come and ask prabhu ji how can i how can i raise my child i tell them go to grahasthas <laughs> they have raised the children huh? they have seen it in their own life. they have experienced it also huh? we can give something from the shastra but they have done it themselves there are grahasthas who have raised their children and got them married and settled in life so through that experience when they come to 50 60 they will become very detached they will want to give lot of wealth and charity to spiritual services they will give their time in studying shastra and preaching and very they will become they will in the vanaprasa stage they will intensify their tapasya and advance so they get realization also and then those who don't get realization what to do huh? say for example if there is a brahmachari or a sanyasi or a brahmachari or a grahastha they have become 70 or 80 still the material desires are there huh? how amazing it is huh? it's like for example somebody is a 30 year old boy and is still wearing diaper huh? let's try to picture is it huh? how funny it will be huh? uh, there are some people who are overly dependent you have seen that huh? emotionally dependent intellectually dependent physically dependent they are dependent for everything they want someone to decide for them they want to, someone to tell them you are okay you are all right actually we have to grow in our maturity with age and practice also hmm? so if somebody even at the age of 70 or 80 is still having desires for dhanam janam and sundarim hmm? they are attracted to opposite sex they are attracted to wealth attracted to fun and material enjoyment that means they are preparing for one more material body they prepare for one more metal body they are preparing right now they, because those that metal body is going to be awarded for fulfilling those desires huh? therefore we have to see that we nullify this desires for a period of time so for nullifying the material desires and awakening spiritual desires the two ashramas are prescribed brahmacharya ashram and grahastha ashram here what is the apprehension of our uh, daksha prajapati he is saying if you think that simply by awakening the sense of renunciation like by you are preaching you are selling narada see you strongly preached to my boys and made them frightened about grahasthasham see if you go to grahasthasham you have to do job 16 hours you know you have to fight the traffic in the morning you will have to take a house and you have to pay emi for 20 years and then tomorrow there will be three four children and you have to stand in queue and admit them in the school and you have to pay a heavy fee sometimes wife will get sick you will have to spend money so are you ready for this better you shave up and come inside huh? some people preach like that huh? so if somebody preaches like that some boys may get frightened oh really no no i don't want to go i don't want to marry huh? better join but that type of preaching will it produce true renunciation it will not produce renunciation yes they appear to be wanting to join ashram the purpose of their joining ashram in that way is fear of pain uh, in the married life correct no they think oh it's too much i won't be able to so some people may join but here also he won't be able to flourish why because he has not come for spiritual activity he has come here for comfort and facility and you want to escape from the suffering and the encumbrances involved in that you understand the point that's what he is saying uh, if you think that simply by awakening the sense of renunciation artificially will detach one from the material world i must say that unless full knowledge of you know the nature of the sun gratification is awakened huh? you, that means one should have full what is the full knowledge full knowledge means maya cannot make me happy only krishna can make me happy hmm? that is knowledge and and i will not indulge in 
mayas allurements. I will engage my mind and senses and words. Like we said, anukulyena krishnanu shilanam bhakti ruttama. Uttama bhakti means engaging kaya vacha manasa, everything in Krishna's service. I will do that. So a person who is joining the ashram should not join just because material life is miserable, but he should join because spiritual life is ultimately the most rewarding life. You, Krishna says that if you give, if you surrender to me, I will take you back to my abode. He says, you know, Chakva Deham Vanajanmana Iti Mameti Sorjana. He says. Similarly, he says that Antakale Chamameva Smaran Mukvakale Varam Yaprayati Samad Bhavam Yati Nastyatra Samshayaha. There is no doubt, Arjuna, if anyone, all life one has devoted to me at the end of his life is remembering me, that devotee will certainly come back to me. In the same manner, he says, Manmanabhava Madhbhakto Madhya Jeevam Namaskuru Mame Vaishyasi Satyam Te Pratijane Priyosime. In truth, I tell you, Arjuna, your devotee will definitely come back to me. If they are always thinking of me, bowing down to me, offering obeisances to me, becoming my devotee. No. And in this way, engaging all their time, energy, money, body, mind, words in my service, they'll definitely come back to me. Several verses Krishna says that. So we have faith in Krishna's words. So with that attraction, we should dedicate our life. Krishna, I give myself to you. I am your property. Tavasmi. You are my master. I am your servant. Take me. Engage me in your service as you wish. And I don't want any independence. I become the property of my spiritual master. By which he will offer me to Krishna. I heard one story. There was one pot in the garden. The gardener used to use this pot for pouring water in the plants. One day this pot got a hole. Then the man kept the pot in one corner of the garden, left it. Then he used another pot for watering the plants. So this pot was weeping. So the weeping sound was heard by the gardener. So then what he did, he took this pot and uh, with, the, with the help of his wife, he got it very nicely painted. Like in Vrindavan, they paint, you have seen that, no? Various designs and everything. He did that with the pot and plucked a bunch of flowers from the garden and put it in this pot. And kept it on the table of the Jamindar, is my his master. Now the pot was like even more amazed. See, earlier I was used for watering the plants in the garden, and after I got a hole, I thought my life has become useless. But now he has put flowers in me and offering me on the table of the Jamindar, which I don't deserve to be sitting there. Similarly, this pot with the hole shows a devotee who, who feels my deficiencies are so many. I am useless devotee, huh? but the Guru is like the gardener, huh? who can actually, uh, the putting the bunch of flowers is like, he brings about good qualities in us, huh? he is giving us good qualities and he is offering us to the Jamindar who is Krishna. Huh? So in this way, <clears throat> our body mind word becomes offerable by touch with Guru, huh? because of the Guru's spiritual touch, you know, then we become somebody more valuable, otherwise we will be asar, good for nothing. Huh? So, <clears throat> in this way, our purpose of joining the Brahmacharya Ashrama should be, I met a very great Vaishnava spiritual master, I will dedicate my life to him. And I am confident that if I stay in his lotus feet, he will offer me to Krishna and my life will become perfect. This type of spiritual dream we should have. Uh, and, uh, and also, after we dedicate our life, we should be very faithful to his order. We should not, uh, you know, uh, cause pain to him by breaking the regulative principles or by not completing chanting or by chasing after some woman. Huh? One should not fall prey to these vices in Brahmacharya Ashrama. You have given our body and words and mind to him, we should not turn back. So then you have come for a spiritual purpose. And also some attraction is also there. How beautiful Krishna is, how wonderful he speaks in Shastra, let me do some service to him. And he is such a wonderful person to be be with. You know? So, this world is so horrible and spiritual world is so blissful. Huh? So, we think about the spiritual world and its beauty and Krishna's nature, everything, and we dream about it. You know? A day when will the day come? It says, when will that day be mine? 
when all my aparadas will be gone and i will chant the shuddha naam and i will meet krishna eye to eye and i will engage in the service of the lotus feet of the divine couple so if this is your ambition like uh, there is another uh, beautiful song also yama gare ange devo chandane ro ganda amar dulava kave hari mukha chandra radha krishna pranamora yugala kiso devane marane gate arnagimo talaka vishakayadi yatashaki vrinda agnaya koriva seva charanadavinda radha krishna pranamora yugala kiso so when you hear such uh, uh, songs of abhilasha they are so soothing to the heart eh? so on one hand we have attraction to serving the lord personally in the spiritual world on the other hand we are very jolly joyful that we got a good spiritual master vaishnava to escort us to that world eh? so and then you also feel that krishna is such a easy path eh? so simple it is you know proper one time my spiritual master was giving a class in one house i was also there so uh, the child in that house it's such a small kid eh? must be 5 year old eh? he is taking the small chamar and doing like this <laughs> in front of the lady so maharaj in the lecture only spoke he said you look at this child even a child can do chamar for krishna huh? it's such a easy path so sugam kartum ave he said therefore the bhakti path is not as uh, strenuous and difficult like the path of gnanis or yogis but only thing is we need an innocent and pure heart genuine heart because we cannot cheat krishna in this path huh? the process is very simple but the application is difficult he says why it's difficult because our duplicity comes into picture huh? in bhakti path we have to give up the duplicity hmm? and uh, as i told you these should be our ambitions huh? serving the divine couple is my ambition you know as a, assisting my spiritual master is my ambition and i have such a big ship of his con society where there are so many vaishnavas to protect me and guide me hmm? and uh, purify me and elevate me so i have nothing to worry huh? everything that i need to go back to godhead is available huh? everything i need i have the necessary books which give me the blueprint i have prasad i have deities i have devotees i have juniors seniors equals huh? and shri prabhupad the commander in chief huh? and i have the most merciful gavanitai the most beautiful radha vandana chandra the most benevolent magnanimous jagannath huh? isn't it so you will see when we when we consider the prospect of going back to godhead with all these facilities we become very confident correct no so if these are the reasons why i am becoming brahmachari in the ashrama then it is very easy you go on therefore he says here that artificially you cannot induce sense of renunciation uh, and think that detachment will come i must say that unless full knowledge is awake and simply changing dresses as you have done cannot possibly bring detachment so how do you know somebody has simply changed the dress and is not having the necessary renunciation that is also observed in this world that somebody is wearing the saffron dress but he is dealing with the members of the opposite sex is not uh, according to mariyada hmm? mariyada means there should be a line huh? you should call the women as matajis and deal with them very respectfully hmm? we cannot uh, inappropriately become too intimate with them hmm? in the name of uh, guiding them or in the name of some service or something like that those fellows who cross the lakshman rekha they can't stay in brahmacharya ashram any more yeah. of course one can properly if brahmacharya wants to marry there is no problem either you want to marry get out go and get properly married and protect that girl also properly live as a grihastha or if you are ready to be a good brahmachari then treat every woman as a mother and just be a faithful follower of guru and go on for life without turning back but the problem comes when some brahmachari becomes hypocritical as lakshya says here hypocritical means wearing a saffron dress but then 
not behaving like a proper renunciate. Huh? So not only brahmacharis, any brahmacharis, sannyasis, people have fallen in this world, not only in ISKCON, in different organizations. And that has become a very great blemish to the religious order. Hmm? People think all sadhus are like this, only they will think. Huh? So they will even suspect the good sadhus also because of that. Hmm? So therefore we should not bring ill femi to the sacred renounced order. And at the same time, we should not be a pretender. Even though there may be some uh, sense of allurement in the mind, one should curb that animal tendency by awakening the angel tendency, by designing our life and molding. Our, molding our life means what? Simply follow Guru, that's all. <laughs> you follow Guru's order, our angel will come out. You break Guru's order, animal will come out, that's all. As simple as that. So, one should always think in the mind, I don't want to make my guru unhappy. You know, it is worse than losing my life. I should preserve that sacred relationship between guru and disciple. How Srila Prabhupada has slogged so much to put up this society. Why should we become debauchees and ruin the good name of this society? If one has a strong leaning for marriage, honestly go to the authorities and say that I want to marry and marry. And then marry and be a good grihastha, be a good brahmacharya or good grihastha, that's the point. So, here one important point Daksha has failed to understand. What is it? These 10,000 Haryashvas boys, when they went to Narayan Saras, they touched the sacred waters and in the morning they were performing uh, worship of, uh, of the Supreme Lord. They were such a pure-hearted fellows, huh? pristine and pure heart they had and that was observed by Narada. Narada understood that these fellows have no propensity for any type of enjoyment. Actually, they don't need to live in the world. They can become Paramahamsas. They have that ability or they have that potential. So, the potential was observed by whom? Narada observed it. And Narada thought, if they have that potential, then why not become good brahmacharis? If they, see, sometimes, some preacher wants some boy to become brahmachari, but the boy is running away, you run behind him. Hey, please become brahmachari. Eh? That's a shame, uh, shameful thing it is. Here, they don't need to be followed up. Only one lecture he gave, Narada, hmm? uh, on that different, very enigmatic, correct, no? He gave that very beautiful, some 10-12 examples he gave. Hmm? And he told them, you just contemplate on it and think what you should do in life. And he went away. And these fellows are so intelligent, immediately they understood. And because we may not understand, for us, Shukadeva Goswami is giving explanation for our sake. Yeah, some people are very intelligent. Like recently I was giving one program in Hyderabad. There was one boy, Vedant. He is just in 7th seventh standard or 8th standard. When I am asking question, every time he is raising hand. Cut, 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 he is giving answer so quickly. Spiritually so awakened. Some people you see like that. Spiritually so astute. It's not from this lifetime. Many lifetimes they must have been doing. Huh? So, uh, some people are very awake and they catch the truths very fast. Huh? They don't need too much uh, long-wounded explanation. Mm-hmm. So, these boys are like that. Therefore, Narada thought, I am telling them the truth now. If they are smart, they will accept it and then take up the renounced order. If they don't want to, Narada Muni was no more to pursue them. But they, they immediately decided to follow the Ramahamsa order. And then when news went to Prajapati Daksha, he became wild, huh? he became very angry, but he tolerated the anger and produced a thousand more. Huh? And that was called Shavalaswas. Again, again, he... See, this is the most amazing Prabhupada says, again, he sent them to the same place. <laughs> Not answer us. See, if it was some other father, he would have told, no training for you. No, just now you get married, you may say. But Daksha Prajapati understood the importance of training huh? and Tapasya also. So they went, they... Narada went there and said, look at your elder brothers, what they did, how you decide what you want to do. And he went away. So they saw the elder brothers and asked the elder brothers, wow, how did you learn, what did you learn? They learned the same shlokas and immediately they also decided to dedicate their life. Now Daksha Pajapati couldn't control his anger. He understood, if I produce boys, Narada is making them renounced. So this time he decided to produce girls. Then he produced girls and then of course Narada couldn't do anything with the girls. Girls have to get eventually married and they will settle. The Taksha thought at least population can increase through the girls, hmm? not with the boys. Like that he produced. So, uh, 
Uh, Daksha Pajapati has one misconception. What is the misconception? He thinks that this Narada has artificially induced renunciation in my sons. Huh? But actually, my sons are getting ready to get married, but he fooled them and took them to renounce daughter, which is actually a misconception. He doesn't know that these boys, they are truly renounced. They are not cheaters. No? They are not uh, hypocrites. No? They are genuine saintly people. That Daksha is not understanding. See, Rishabhadev had 100 sons. No? Out of 100 sons, 10 of them became Kshatriyas. And you will see, 9 of them became Navayogendras. Paramahamsas. Huh? And the other 81 became Karmakand Brahmanas. Huh? That means in one family itself, you have multiple uh, castes. You find that Brahman, Kshatriya, all the different categories are available purposes. Similarly, these sons born to Daksha, they were not ordinary people. Huh? They were top class, uh, evolved, highly evolved personalities, which he was not aware. He wanted them to follow his path of Dharmartha Kama Moksha. Huh? He wanted them to go through the Grasta order and then eventually come to Sanyas order. That was his order. You see, he was telling Narada that don't think, I don't want them to renounce. I want them to renounce, but after going through Grasta Ashram. He will say that in future verses. Because according to Daksha, only if you go through Grasta Ashram and experience all difficulties, then only your renunciation will be powerful. Huh? Directly, if somebody becomes Brahmachari, they don't know the world. They think like that. Actually, Brahmacharis may not know the world, but they have the necessary renunciation which comes by hearing. Shrotra Adin Indriyanyanya Samya Magnish Jukhuvati. It is possible to get that realization only by hearing and faithfully following Guru. And that was not known to Daksha Pajapati. Like, you know, Prabhupada was asked by some uh, Alan Ginsberg, Swamiji, you say no to drugs. Have you tasted drugs? He asked. Prabhupada said, no, my disciples have tasted and I know how they are suffering. And I don't have to taste it myself. <laughs> he said. Similarly, Brahmacharis, those who have become sincere and serious brahmacharis, they are seeing the world around, just like I told you about the park example. No? Is that correct? No? You can see and learn, you can hear and learn, why do you have to do and learn? No? So those who have to do, they will do it. But those who are, don't have to go through it, you can only hear and learn. And these fellows are like that. They could hear and learn. They just heard, they didn't even see also, they just heard and learned, that's all. That means they are which class? First class. No? And this fellow doesn't know. Daksha doesn't know that they are first-class devotees. So, in the same manner, many boys and they become brahmacharis. Uh, one mother father came and said, Hey, Swamiji, you don't know me. My son is a masum. He doesn't know anything. He is totally dependent on parents. I wash his clothes when he comes home. He is totally dependent. What a brahmachari is going to What a brahmachari. They gave a slap, they gave him, took him home. <laughs> I told actually, see, you are mother and father, this boy belongs to you first, because you gave him birth now, so you have the right over the son, and I can't keep him here. If you want to take him, you take him home. So they took him home, and he, in home also for two weeks, he was sincerely practicing, waking up in the morning, doing, he was only one brahmachari dancing at home, Mangalarati, eh? eh? he was chanting Hare Krishna, reading Bhagavatam, and he gathered all the people from the neighborhood, and he's having program in their house every day. Mm -hmm. 15, 20 people are coming. And the parents saw. Then later on they said, I, you can't believe our son is so evolved. We thought uh, he's just uh, making a show of some bhakti. But we are seeing that this fellow is deeply interested now. And this is the realization of many people across the globe about his con devotees. So later on the parents had no problem in the boy coming and joining. Because the parents understood that Renunciation that he has achieved is genuine. It is not something superficial. No? They thought he is a kid. He is not a kid. He is a evolved personality. So this fellow, Laksha will pro probably realize that later. No? That his sons are not ordinary. No? They are great devotees of Lord Narayana. Because once you become a devotee of Krishna, you know, then not only you have to get rid of the material allurements, you also get an upward pull, which the Lord gives you by higher taste. No? Higher taste gives you such a powerful upward pull, the lower taste can be kicked off very easily, without much difficulty. Hmm? You have no time for the lower taste. In fact, you feel lower taste is abominable. Hmm? It is uh, uh, no, nothing attractive at all, hmm? like Yudhra Maharaj felt in the same manner. So, these are very interesting sections and important sections of Bhagavatam, which, uh, which have to be properly, nicely understood. Hmm?
and so, so that we know our responsibilities in the order which we all have taken up in our lives. Shri Prabhupada ki, or Bhakta Runta ki. Is there questions? Okay. Those who have to go for Prasad, you can carry on. I am going to answer questions for 5 minutes and then I will conclude. Huh? But those who are a little hungry for Prasad, you can carry on. Huh? Is seeking spiritual happiness is sense gratification, as we also have spiritual senses in spiritual world. No, that is your nature. Huh? He says, you know, Nayanam galada shrudharaya, vadanam gadgada ruddhaya gira, pulakai nichitam vapukkada, tavanam agrihane bhavishyati. He's saying that, when I am chanting your name, holy name, when will my eyes be decorated with tears of love for you, Krishna? Huh? When will my hair stand on end? So he's aspiring for spiritual progress. At the same time, one should not too much hanker for happiness in chanting, because you are not so advanced now. Huh? And uh, in the early stage, only one wants higher taste in chanting. It will not happen immediately. It will take some time. Huh? One should be patient also. What is the difference between artificial enunciation and uh, preaching strongly? Good question. Very good question. Like now, do you agree that Vizara preached strongly to Dhritarashtra? Correct, no? Hmm? And then Dhritarashtra got awakened. Correct, no? It's called Balot Padita, we call it. So, now, in Balot Padita, what happens? Okay, somebody preached very strongly. The boy renounced everything and he shaved up. And within one month, you will again go back. You will see that. That means it is artificial renunciation. Correct, no? Uh, on the other hand, if somebody was preached strongly, the boy is pragna, we call it. Pragna means contemplative intelligence has become awakened by strong preaching. Then he will never leave. Mm -hmm. Once he comes, he will just stay steadily. Then it is not artificial. Then it is genuine. Mm -hmm. That means the genuine renunciation can awaken in two ways. Swabhaviki or Alod Padita, both ways. But it has to lead to pragna, contemplative intelligence, where he can go on and on. Correct, no? How to develop the awareness that we all uh, are separate from body? Because it is said that theoretical understanding that I am not this body will not work. We have to see always uh, as master of body, how to work on it. Actually, for this, we have to... Uh, very dynamically and actively engage in devotional service in various ways, like, for example, uh, deity services, you know, dressing the deity, decorating the deity, worshipping the deity, going out on book distribution. Robert says that Aham Brahmasmi becomes realized by devotional activities. Huh? So the more you act devotionally in relation to Krishna and Guru, that the remembrance as it increases, you will realize that this body is only a dress over me. I am, I am different from the body. But if you don't act, if you are lazy and lethargic, then the bodily consciousness increases by that. Then we think, I am the body, we think. But when you act in devotion service, in that connection, then we become realized. How to know my decision? And one more thing, if you do sense gratification, then bodily consciousness increases. If you curb sense gratification and uh, do more and more active devotion service in relation to Guru and Krishna, then the spirit... So the spirit soul awareness increases by that. How to know my decision is right or wrong? It may be right or wrong for the same thing that the two of them are trying to do. Yeah. Very easy. For example, somebody decided to be a Brahmachari. He tried in the, is in the ashram now. Are you happy in the ashram? Are you rendering services nicely? Did you get a nice solid service which you are doing? And there may be some little difficulty. There may be little allurements pulling you inside the mind. But overall, if you see, you are going on, you say no to Maya and just keep going on and on. And it is making you more and more cheerful, happy, you get nourishment. You are, you are like Prabhupada says, uh, Gajendra was getting nourishment. I mean, the crocodile was getting nourishment in water. Huh? So your enthusiasm should increase. You should become more uh, happier, enthusiastic and eager to take services, befriending the devotees. Gradually, you will get to see that in this ashram, I am quite comfortable. This is very good ashram. You develop more faith and confidence. And if somebody is feeling too much attracted to opposite sex and they are staring at the sky and they are not able to be a good brahmachari, even your devotion service is hampered. Day and night, one is suffering from longing uh, for family life and everything. Then he can get married and in family life, he can practice devotion service. 
you need not uh, too much force yourself to be a brahmachari correct now abhi in mithya char sauchate what is the difference between contemplating uh, as mind affected by past impressions yeah actually even the good strain you have seen if i put a break here good strain will stop there you have seen that hmm? in the same manner you will see that even though one may become brahmachari the past impressions will attack him for some time hmm? therefore krishna says rasavarjam so api asya what is the meaning of that such a point although the lower attractions remain sometimes disturbing in the background but they don't hamper your devotional service because you will see that there may be some past impression that doesn't stop you from chanting hare krishna that doesn't stop you from doing services that doesn't stop you from doing various activities in this moment you are still enthusiastic for devotional activities but past impressions time to time haunt you they are like a ghost from behind gradually those impressions will get nullified over a period of time that is all right but what krishna is telling is different for example ravana wore the dress of a monk mendicant correct no and big jata he kept rudraksha and everything and then he wore saffron so he wore that dress but when he came in front of the panchavati you know sita is giving him fruits and he is staring at her with the desire to enjoy her that is mithyachara savachate ha huh? externally appearing to be someone controlling the senses but his intent is to enjoy her uh, and this this is much different from you know if you see a yeah, brahmachari for example he is wearing brahmachari dress he is making an effort to be a sincere soul but he is attacked by past impressions this is different hmm? his intention is not to enjoy his intention is to rise up hmm? since diksha guru is not available easily following guru's instructions especially in grihastha ashram means what is it following counselor's order actually there are many counselors who don't give any order also huh? they will only conduct few meetings in a month and if you have any problems you can go to them huh? they will solve it otherwise counselors also leave you to yourself huh? because they don't want to interfere with you they know that you have your wife children family you have your set of difficulties so the grihastham is in that sense very challenging so what i would suggest grihasthas Uh, grihasthas can have a strong connection with uh, one uh, at least one brahmachari in the temple just like uh, revati pati prabhu antadi pondal they all are uh, connecting with certain grihasthas similarly daujini tai prabhu you will see similarly sri sachindan prabhu like that there are many senior devotees huh? madan sundar prabhu kanada go prabhu you see they are all doing congregation programs so if grihasthas have connection with brahmacharis that uh, re- renounced inspiration is very necessary for grihasthas huh? because when grihasthas go to brahmachari and say prabhu i am going to council meetings but nothing new in my life i am just attending monthly twice my counselor is re- is, uh, is like my spiritual parent ready to solve my problems but my counselor doesn't push me to go for book distribution or preaching or anything so can you give me a push then brahmachari can give push so they should go to brahmachari i would say every grihastha should have one brahmachari connection in the temple and you can tell the brahmachari prabhu ji please engage me in my you know some kind of service and there are also grihasthas like mukundanand prabhu rasamt prabhu they have a sanjeevani you can go and ask them please engage me in some service i would say that you know counselors may not engage you all the time they leave it to you because they are generally very caring and compassionate they don't want to push anybody they fear that if i push him then family will suffer <laughs> so therefore what you should do if you are interested to advance in spiritual life very rapidly go to your brahmachari or some department like that and then request them if mata ji want to engage she should go with her husband husband and wife both should go and approach the brahmachari and then brahmachari will connect her uh, to some mata ji like for example the deity department there jana mata ji satyat mata ji radhika mata ji there jugala prabhu mata ji many other seniors are there hmm? so they will engage you very nicely there is also vaikuntha valasti mata ji is engaging many ladies in children preaching a lot of opportunities so grihastha should go out of the way begging for service i would say hmm? and brahmacharis know these things they will connect you if you go and meet meet them especially saffron senior brahmacharis can you kindly share more attributes of real renunciation does flickering enthusiasm in bhakti means false renunciation actually in the early phase of bhakti practice 
there is flickering enthusiasm. Hmm? But after you have progressed to a certain degree, there's a steady enthusiasm. Hmm? It becomes very, very steady, rock steady. Hmm? Beginning, you know, we, we say, no, Utsahamai, Ganatarala, Vyuda Vikalpa, uh, Nyamakshama, uh, you know, Vishay Sangara, and, you know, Sarangarangani and all that. But if one is practicing continuously for years, one will get steady enthusiasm. And, uh, and the attributes of real renunciation means uh, one is a uh, fixed up devotee, we say. Uh, in the rain and shine, the devotee will be engaged in Krishna consciousness. In foul weather, fair weather, one will never waver. How to check that we are not Mithyachari? Mithyacharis. So, there are various ways we can check it. For example, uh, if one is uh, feeling some disturbance in the mind due to some member of opposite sex, what are you doing with that? Are you going and revealing your mind to a senior and taking help? Or you are pursuing in this direction of calling that person on phone and talking and getting close and you are in the process of falling down. <laughs> are you in the process of falling down or are you taking help from a senior? If you are taking help from a senior, you are not a Mithyachari. If you are secretly making a plan to fall down, then it is Mithyachari. Very simple it is, very clear it is. Similarly, if one is feeling some attraction like that, then one has to intensify study of Shastra, intensify chanting, intensify deity service and all that. Are you doing that? If you are doing that, that means you are working against being a Mithyachari. So there are various ways to know. How wonderful you impart the Krishna's love and knowledge of Shastras to the audience. We are so much fortunate having you. I am so much inspired from you. Oh, that's all. Okay. There is no question here. I think. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada ki.